Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we have a public hearing scheduled for 7 o'clock uh, on zoning and code revisions. Sue, would you read the public hearing notice? Please take notice that the Town Board of Wilton, New York County of Saratoga will hold a public hearing on proposed zoning and code revisions. Said public hearing with proposed zoning and code revisions as follows. Change existing H1 zone to RV1 zone at the Wilton Ganser Road, Northern Pines Road, East Lane and Ballard Road and propose amendments to zoning schedule G, 129 attachment 13, H1, zone and code amendments in sections 109-16 through 109-21, 109-30 and 109-33, 109-35 and 129-49.6. Proposed revisions are on file in the town clerk's office and can be viewed during normal business hours and online at townofwilton.com. Said public hearing will be held on Thursday, August 1st, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall located at 22 Traver Road in said town, at which time all persons will be given an opportunity to be heard. Okay, uh, over the public hearing, we have some few people that have signed up to speak. Um, first, and there, I do want to remind people of the three-minute limit on this. It's uh, Connie Towers. I do respect and appreciate the efforts of the community. But I still feel like the end of this, not just the architectural standards, we should be integrity and intent of the neighborhood. 12.8 minutes of the razor doesn't work, and then like 15 minutes doesn't work in the valley road at Hamlin. So these are my notes regarding the red lines. Um, I have indicated Hamlin H1 6619, so it's not the current one. I apologize. Um, I believe Schedule G should now read total side yard of 30 feet entirely down the town. Um, be consistent with number two footnote at the bottom uh, regarding the maximum height of the building should be incorporated into page seven under architectural standards. And the line, possibly something along these lines, the building frontage with no long continuous facade um, as reflected in the committee minutes of May 14th. Um, the footnote 6 would be changed to decrease, decrease the density per acre if that's what the town board decides upon, um, whereupon that would change section 129, 176, and under apartment housing, which would be reflected in the density it was done in. 2007 and 2012, but I refer to the mark for that. Um, Article 129, uh, Article 8, Chapter 129, Page 1, the entire section would, of course, be um, changed, reflecting on that. What is going to be, which is 44. Um, I talked to some of the town board members about. 12976, um, it's page uh, 87, item B6. The planning board may waive and modify scaling requirements listed under 129176, and I hope that's scratched. It's been removed. Okay, it overrides our town code, I believe. Um, and so everything is referred to that code exception in our town bill. Um, and then I would appreciate someone looking into the CBS light before all this construction happens because it's only letting three people through at a time and your backlog with the new nodes of uh, that building be constructed in order to know it's backing everything up besides the bells So thank you. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes, you do. Yes, You're next. Nancy Dwyer, 12 New Kent Road. Um, this is a public hearing. And I argue the majority of residents in this town have no idea what's going on, let alone what we've been proposed. To no close level can I address issues in this code revision the way Connie does. She has been following the code in that hamlet since day one when the board and building went up. And she reads and spends unbelievable amount of time doing that. The majority of the 17 to 18,000 people in this community have no idea. 
This board is supposed to vote on the code committee's recommendations, and this board has final say in what ultimately ends up in our code. I know there's at least one board member that was unaware that the town board has that power and responsibility. They were under the impression the code revision committee had the power to rewrite the code. Another board member expressed to June meeting regarding the moratorium that the large packet they had just received a day or two before the meeting from the code revision committee was too large for him to comprehend. I'm assuming he meant in such a short time. Well, I hope there has been sufficient time spent reading all of the proposed changes from then and those that have hopefully occurred between then and now so as to make intelligent and informed decisions on what is to become the building block foundation for this town's future. Now I say hopefully occurred because I have no idea this committee has even met since, since to complete unfinished items. I will bet money most, if not all, residents in this town have no idea about these meetings or that this committee has even existed for three years as another of our town board members was unaware. I'm on the town's email list but receive no emails. It is not a secret that I'm interested in attending these meetings as I had attended several prior to June. You are technically only there to observe, so at no point that I'm aware of has there been any request or outreach for public input other than to me. I do know you voted against the moratorium and that a backroom deal was struck to address just a couple of issues within the Hamlet Zone. A committee member expressed at June's meeting that there are a lot of people unhappy with the Hamlet. Not sure where that poll was done or how biased or unbiased it was. I propose that it is not the Hamlet concept that has his lot may have issue with, but the interpretation and implementation we are witnessing is not at all what the intent was at its inception. So in closing, I'd like to express my frustration that you are even calling this a public hearing when the public at large has no real concept of what's being proposed or how it will impact the future growth and build out of our town. Uh, Eric? Eric Rosenberg, 16 Pro Lane. Um, just a couple of comments. I haven't looked at the code revisions. It seems that um, the focus of the code revisions was pretty narrow. Uh, my concern, as usual, has to do with the process. It sort of piggybacks a little bit on um, uh, what Nancy said. Um, first of all, it, 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 I understand. Sorry. Can't be three minutes. <laughs> we were only hoping. You need to I'm trying to talk slowly, but I didn't talk that slowly. You need to talk a little faster. Yeah. Anyway, um, if I recall correctly, um, uh, the board was made up, if not exclusively, almost exclusively, of current town officials and prior town officials. I'm not exactly sure why, even on the committee, um, uh, the town did not reach out to a broader range of community members to say to get the input of what people want. Um, I, I have no doubt that um, in doing all this, you met. I'm not going to say no doubt. I assume um, that uh, the law was followed and procedures were followed. But I would, su but I su uh, suggest that the minimum was done. Again, um, why wasn't all of this advertised um, on the, the town website and the town um, the Facebook page and, and things like, we want your input. We, your town board, we want to understand what it is that the residents of Wilton want. And that just doesn't seem to happen here. Um, and I'm not sure why. Um, I've heard stories of why, and I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But um, I, I would just like to see the town um, show a bit more, being a bit more open um, to really involving uh, more of the citizens of Wilton um, in this process. Um, it can only uh, bode well for the future of Wilton and um, it will um, certainly go a long way to stopping people like me standing up here and saying, why isn't the town more open and receptive uh, to what the citizens of Wilson want? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to make a quick comment on that because the zoning, the zoning revision committee was to, uh, to, there was a comprehensive plan update and it was, Many people attended, and many people input, it was advertised. The Zoning Revision Committee is just to 
implement the zoning changes based on the recommendations based on the comprehensive plan so it's it's and it turns out to be the Hamlet zone happened to be the one that was most addressed but the comprehensive plan update it was well advertised it was all over the place and people attended and had their input this is just kind of a follow-up to that comprehensive plan and so I just to Eric's point, the public was invited, and this is just kind of a zoning changes that, based on the input from the public on the comprehensive plan update. All right. And they were open as well. Uh, Dave Boucher. I'm Dave Boucher, um, 2201 Heritage Way. Uh, I will say what Art said about the comprehensive plan is absolutely 100% true because I was that much of the community and a very good process and tremendous amount of public input and advertising and all that stuff. I'm just going to re restate what I said at the last meeting where there weren't a lot of people here. Um, a lower density in the Hamlet zone will lead to larger per capita carbon footprints, more sprawl and increased habitat destruction. True environmentalists and nature lovers like higher densities. <coughs> Within a short walk from Park Place, we'll find a post office, a dry cleaner, a bookstore, a hair salon, a deli, a pizza place, wine shop, stewards, two banks, a pharmacy, Dunkin' Donuts, a motel, nice restaurant, sit down restaurant, a college, a daycare center, a dance studio, an audiologist, two eye doctors, a church, a farm field, air fund, a strip of dentist, a veterinarian, a storage facility, a retirement home, and a country club. And I found out also a CPA and a massage bar, all within walking distance of that place, of, of Park Place. These services and amenities are all, all decided to locate and will based on market conditions only. Over-specifying the type of business that can be allowed in a multi-use building in the H1 zone will lead to vacant space as seen in other similar developments. It is best to set some general guidelines and let business owners determine the highest and best use for lands in the H1 zone. My point there is just please don't over specify what you do in these buildings because I know some people don't like the hospital and stuff. If you start over specifying, it's going to be a big Dave, was it your intention to use the phrase massage parlor? You may want to talk about a licensed massage therapist. It is a massage. I don't think anybody took it differently than, <laughs> than what you're suggesting. Wandered a little. Next to the, uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Those are all who have signed up for the public hearing. Is there anybody who didn't sign up who would like to speak? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. I will now call to order the regular uh, uh, monthly meeting of the town board, August 1st. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call. Mm -hmm. Get your cut off, Bart. <laughs> Supervisor Johnson. Here. Councilman Stryker. Here. Councilman Bogardi. Here. Deputy Supervisor Lamp. Here. Councilman McEachern. Here. Okay, we'll begin the meeting with uh, public comment period and let's see. Nancy Dwyer's first up. Three minutes again, please. Dwyer's, Welby, Kent Road. Um, I spoke to Ju at the June Town Board meeting regarding the lack of long-term plan for road maintenance in Wilton. Um, so I won't go into all the details that led me to uh, come to that conclusion. Uh, but we have a 2015 update to the traffic planning study that evaluated accident data, development trends, and traffic forecasting, non-motorized transportation, and proposed drafts for improvements and prioritization. 
We have a 2016 road condition report compiled by Cornell Local Roads Program, giving an extremely detailed scope and 10-year plan for road repairs and maintenance that adheres to our highway department's approximate $900,000 annual road repair budget. Are we following this? The roads in my neighborhood are crumbling and there does not seem to be any indication as to when or even if we are any schedule to be repaid or repaired. I was told, quote, there is no formal request form for a road to be repaid. We take all requests from residents and at budget time we have reduced the request and schedule the worst ones to be done in the next year. Unfortunately, there are many subdivisions within the town that need to have roads repaid. If we don't have enough money in the budget to do all the roads in a subdivision in one year, then they get moved to the next year. We can only work with what the board has approved, end quote. Well, the department is the one that makes the budget. The 2016 report includes crack sealing as a less costly way to maintain roads and increase the life of roads, and lists in detail which roads need crack sealing, which need repaving, and which need replacing, with a timeline recommendation for all. It is my understanding that our highway department does not implement crack sealing. With each new development, roads are turned over to our town to maintain. It's costly. What is our plan and how are we paying for the increased expense? And where is our current road maintenance long-term plan? Thank you. Uh, uh, Eric Rosenberg. Um, I, of course, um, attended the various uh, town meetings this month, uh, the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals, and as is pretty typical um, when I make my comments, um, I was subjected to quite a few uh, insults and um, uh, fabricated accusations. But I want to tell you, gentlemen, uh, that you're shooting the messenger. So, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before. These are materials, these two booklets are put out by the Department of State. They describe, not my opinion, they describe what the law is in New York and what is considered appropriate procedures for the enforcement and application of the zoning laws. And I've read them and I've read them quite a few times. I also want to point out that I have my own copy of the town law. So, um, when I come to meetings or I write my letters, um, more often than not, I'm not giving you my opinion. I am repeating, I'm just the messenger, what New York is saying, we here in Wilton, this is what we should be doing. And based on my attendance at meetings and review of the files, I am confident in saying that a lot of what these materials say we are supposed to be doing, we do not do here in Wilton. Not my opinion, I read it here. A lot of what these materials say is the law, in, in the state of New York, we are not in compliance with here in Wilton. So you can keep attacking me every month and ignore my letters. Your beef isn't with me. Your beef is with the state of New York, who says this is the way it's supposed to work. What I find particularly perplexing is the intensity with which it seems this board <coughs> refuses to even consider the possibility that, the, that, that there's things we could be doing better. Um, the excuse that we've been doing it this way for a lot of years just is not a valid excuse. Um, so, um, again, I would, I would recommend um, that the town officials read these materials. Um, part of the town attorney's job is to raise these issues with the town, and from what I can tell, um, at least at meetings and stuff, that doesn't happen either. Um, we continue again in a, many ways, not every way, but in a lot of ways, important ways, we just are not in compliance. Again, insulting me and fabricating accusations against me, you're shooting the messenger. Got to be, call up the state of New York and say, we don't want to do it that way. They may not be responsive, but that's who your beef is with. Uh, uh, Dave Bush. <laughs> I don't know if this is um, appropriate for the Code Revision Committee, but over the past couple years I've asked a number of times about political lawn signs. <laughs> and right now we're only allowed one sign per property, okay? 
And what I have requested to the code committee, and I've said it to all the people on the committee numerous times and asked numerous people here, and I've talked to the Democrats about this, the Democrats, Pat Tudors, and Dr. Nancy Dwyer and all. We should allow, or we'd like to allow, two lawn signs, total of 32 square feet on a corner lot, okay? Because we do this all the time. You, if you have a big corner lot, you put one on this street, you put one on this street, you can't even see them from each other. So that is just a request that we in the political world have asked for. And I don't know if that if it goes here to this committee or where, but I've always been told, well, when we update the code, we'll include it, we'll include it, you know, it's a code is change. It? So I don't know when you could do that, if you can do that now or you could do it later. But it's just an issue that's been out there, and, and frankly, every every elected official here, except Sue, has has had this issue. As has, as I know, because I put your signs up on each corner box, and I don't see any problem with it. I don't think anybody sees it. Probably it's just that. And then what happens when you're out of code on these things? What happens? And then then you get the whole you guys don't follow your own law stuff. So let's let's get rid of that. And you know. Look, Lawn signs are contentious during elections that people like to nitpick and all that stuff. And you see every year you see them in the paper. If that's something we can do, I don't know when we can do that. Now or later. Okay. Uh, okay, this, that concludes the public comment period. Uh, next uh, item is uh, minutes pending from our July meeting. A motion to approve the uh, minutes from our July meeting. I'll make the motion that we approve the, the minutes from our July meeting. I'll second it. Is there any questions about them, discussion, or uh, request for changes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So move. All right, number five, zoning and code revisions. Uh, we've been dealing with this for, for some time now. Um, the town board as well as um, the zoning revision committee and uh, um, we had a public hearing tonight. Is We can vote tonight. Is everybody comfortable voting tonight? Or is there anything you heard tonight that you would want to um, uh, hold off another month. We've been dealing with this for some time now. Uh, no. Everyone ready to vote tonight? I, am, I just uh, I just want to make a comment. Is I know we've been accused of being a closed door on this uh, zoning process and everything. I attended a lot of meetings and I actually went out and knocked on doors one Saturday um, in various areas in the town. Talked to them about town concerns and density and building and construction and everything. Um, the overwhelming majority of the people I talked to were, you know, they had no problem with density, they had no problem with everything. Uh, traffic, there was a slight little uh, um, concern about. Um, most of the concerns I got kind of goes to Nancy a little bit is uh, roads. You know, the, my pothole, I got a pothole here and this and that. So the biggest concern I had, and I, I, I pulled about 30 different houses in, in various neighborhoods, um, so I do knock on doors. I'm not campaigning, I'm not up for election, so I don't really need the votes this year. Um, and um, pretty much everybody's pretty happy with the town, the way it's run. Um, there are some concerns, Kirk, with some of the roads, but I'm sure you hear that all the time. Um, but as far as density and stuff like that, um, people do not have a big concern as far as our, our comprehensive plan. Um, but um, I know in the one hamlet there is a density uh, concern. Um, and that's the only comment I got to make. Okay. John? Yeah, I, I <coughs> I've been working on this now for about uh, six years. And I've knocked on a lot of doors as well. Um, and a lot of people don't understand density the way... When somebody understands density, they understand there's a there's an issue with it, right. uh, and it's been uh, on my mind for a long time. That's why it was brought up. There was no backdoor deals made. I speak for the town. The town elected me. I speak for them and only them. This density hurts me as a business person. The revisions I want to make hurts me as a businessman. But as a resident, that's what that's what the residents want. That's who I work for. 
So um, if we're going to vote on this revision, the, I want, the I'd like one revision in that, and that's Schedule G. And before I make that motion, there was an, there was a, uh, an item in there on page 87 that has been scratched out, where it does not, it gives the town board the um, final say, not the planning board. So that has been scratched out. Uh, so I'd like to make the revision on Schedule G that uh, residential use include multifamily dwelling apartments at a maximum density of 15 units per gross buildable acre be changed to 12 units per gross buildable acre. So you're proposing that amendment? Amendment, yes. Is there a second to John's amendment? Uh, just uh, you know, before you go on that, I, I do want to thank the zoning revision committee because they put Absolutely. a lot of effort and work in this. It's been over over a, a period of a period of time, and uh, he did a great job with that. And I want to thank all those involved. You know, Ryan and Steve was on that committee. It's, I think there's others in the audience that may have been on that committee too. But uh, so it's been a long time coming. So, uh, but first we'll vote on on. on uh, right. And I would like to also, you know, they, they, there was a lot of issues with the height of a sign at the last planning board meeting. Seems like everybody, all the members, like small signs. Um, I I asked them then if that's how they feel then that should have been put in the code revision. Um, yeah, the but to, to tell an applicant that they have to have a short sign when the code says they can have a 20-foot sign, to me, seems a little unfair. So if, if that's what they want, I gave them every opportunity to put it in this revision. I didn't see it, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming that they want to keep that the way it was at the 20-foot height. Wow. Um, but to me, it's not fair to an applicant that comes in and they're reviewing all the codes and uh, what they can and can't have, and it says they can have a 20-foot high sign, and then our board says, well, we'd like to see that 10-foot high or 8-foot high. Um, yeah. Something to think about, but it's not part of the changes. I think it's not you know, part of the changes, no, because uh, to me, uh, if an applicant wants a 20 foot high sign, then you know what, they should be able to get it. Yeah. You know, th these changes relate to the comprehensive plan update, which is not part of that, but it's something that can be revisited another time if necessary. Right. But uh, you know, for now, the, the, the committee's job is, is done, and we that is done. That, what they were and, and I do commend them, thank you, absolutely, anyone who was on it. Um, so, um, well, first we'll vote on, on John's uh, um, amendment uh, from reducing that density from 15 to 12. Um, does it have to be presented like in the Hamlet? Uh, just Schedule G is fine. That's you're talking that's Schedule that's G, note, note six, right? Note six, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, and I, the zoning committee looked at this and, you know, the thing were fine was it 15, but you know what, the ones, the apartments that are there and the zoning, they're all within like 12 or 13, so I don't see, you know, a big problem in, in reducing it to 12. And it still fits our comprehensive plan. I did look into that too. Absolutely. All right, we'll, we'll vote on the amendment Please first. Say. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. I oppose it. We get uh, about four. One was received uh, on, uh, on eight. Uh, the reason why I vote no is because I do think that the hamlet intentionally is for a greater density is important to bring people in to the to uh, to the businesses and to to have that type of atmosphere. Smaller amount of uh, population there is may you know not uh, become the intent and you might not ever have the the intent of the hamlet zone with a small amount of uh, population okay, next we need uh thank you Steve. uh we have a motion we need a motion to approve the zoning and code revisions as presented with uh, the amendment uh, that was approved on the density 
Mark? Um, if, it, if anyone makes that motion, I'm going to suggest that they include in that motion that these are minor revisions that do not constitute an action subject to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act. Yeah, I, I was going to make the motion. I can, that, you said I that. can write that down for the town clerk. I make a motion what he said. I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, zoning code revisions with the amendment uh, on Schedule G, Note 6, with everything that Mr. Schachter added to it. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion, questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Next is contract approval with SZ Enterprises. This has to do with, um, you want to take this, Maria? <laughs> so SZ Enterprises LLC is the company that handles the cleanup of our cemeteries. Um, they do the job on an annual basis, and we would like to put a resolution forward to accept having a contract with them this year. And the contract will be renewed annually with board approval annually. They're in the process now of cleaning up the cemetery. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, last last year. They cleaned up uh, over on uh, Loudon Road mm -hmm. uh, that cemetery, and uh, they built on a curb. Depending on how what they got to do to the stone, but you know the cemeteries are important. They look look good, and over here, you know, it's an entrance into the town. So right. I think it's worth the investment to to make it uh, make those stones look good Is in the respect cool? of the and families that are in there. Mark, can I ask you a procedural question, please? Yes. Um, when a contract is up. Um, do we as a town, is there a requirement that we put something out for bid? Um, or can we just renew the same contract over and over and over, over, over? I would assume this, this is a professional service, so we don't have to bid. This is a, this has, he has been doing this work for the town for, for many years, but it's like engineering or accounting or other professional services that you're not required to bid. Is, is that correct? Correct. Yes, that is correct. So general municipal law has a, um, whole section about procurement and professional services you can go up to $35,000 without having to go to bid. For purchases of goods you have a threshold of 20000 So this contract is professional services far less than the $35,000 threshold. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so do we need a motion to, to approve that contract? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to accept the S and Z Enterprise contract for the restoration of gravestones in the Emerson Cemetery for up to seventy-five hundred dollars. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion or questions? This, uh, this, this uh, artist, Reed, yeah. artist Reed is, is the yes. guy's name, right? Yes. Artist Reed is the one of the partners. He does a lot of the work. It was just in the news. That the question. Question. No, actually, it, Kurt does the cutting the grass around. Yeah, no, this is just to reset the them. These are the actual um, stones. Yeah. Restore them if you can. Do they clean them up? Yes. Yeah. 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 Power wash. Clean them. Yep. They lift them out of the ground. Some of these stones, I went over and they Flopped looked. over, yeah. Some of the stones have sunk like 12 inches. Mm -hmm. and they made their own kind of hoist, and they actually lift them out gently. Mm -hmm. And they're very respectful. And, you know, I think they... They treat these graves like their own family members. So, I was yeah. impressed. I can relate to that. That's right. Okay, did we vote? No, we didn't yes, vote. Yes, we okay. did. Did we vote? We did. Not in all of them. Oh, we had a motion. Wayne, John, all in favor. Okay. We did. I don't think I did. We didn't vote. We took two. We, took no, two. we just okay. took the we first motion right. and second. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 No, I, I don't remember. I'm getting old. Okay, we have a couple personnel policy amendments. Um, the first, uh, this, this, the legislature this year passed um, on, on their voting, early voting policy and uh, some other voting issues. 
They put in a law that um, the town or all municipalities have to allow up to three hours for any employee to take off uh, to vote during work hours and without charging their time. So um, this policy kind of um, uh, is following the county policy on this, but the state the state law was kind of not not really um, it was kind of vague. But we want to what this does is makes a form where you have to formally request. It has to be requested. To, uh, well, it is in the state law uh, two days prior to, but it gives us uh, the discretion of, uh, of allowing it only uh, before work hours or after hours. Uh, not in the middle of the uh, day and uh, it gives us the uh, poli um, you know if you if you work here you got to vote next door you don't get three hours off it gives us discretion <laughs> <laughs> I should hope it wouldn't take three hours no matter where they have to go. <laughs> Town's only 12 minutes long. <laughs> so it gives us a flexibility to deny um, if someone charges three hours to go next door that we can uh, uh, make them charge. Uh, it has to be a reasonable amount of time. Right. Can I just, can I add something? Yeah. Is that there's a form that the employee who is requesting time off from work to go vote would fill out and has to give to the supervisor. The supervisor would review it, ask those questions, those necessary questions, you know, is this really necessary, and sign off on the form. And the supervisor does have the discretion, like Art said, to um, reject or allow just a portion of the three hours. I would hope so. Yes. I don't disagree with it, but in our department, it could be a huge impact on mm -hmm. my department, especially if we're in the middle of a snowstorm. I mean, do I let my whole crew take two hours off to go vote, or are we going to have to divide them somehow to say, okay, half you guys go now, the other half goes later on? And yeah, that's going to be your call. I mean, obviously, you know, if you live, if they live in Glens Falls, then they're going to need more time than somebody who lives here. So, you know, and you're going to have to shift your schedule. I mean, it is law. We have to allow them if if they they request it, and it's. But you know, you're just going to have to manipulate when, who, when, and who can go where if it happens. So. Yeah, and and hopefully in November when elections are generally occurring, there's not a lot of snow. Yeah. But th we do know that the polls open at six and they close at nine generally, so we do have flexibility on either end there as well. Yeah. Tina, you had a question. Well, I was just going to say the polls are open at nine, so most. Of yeah, I don't even know why they put this in. But mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it opens at six and close at nine. That you can't yeah, vote. Well, My other question is, are I the way I'm interpreting this is. The employee wants the time off during the during his work hours, not prior to 7 a.m. or not after 3:30 in the afternoon. No, it would be during work hours, and they, they it would be during work hours, and they had to fi file a request by Friday, uh, uh, by noon Friday of the day before, because uh, elections on Tuesday. So, um, so I I don't know that. It's going to be a big yeah, issue. I don't but see uh, that being. Didn't they vote in an early voting election this year? Anyway? We do. The yeah, but days. that has enough. This is separate. They suck this in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only on the day, election day. Our this is also another state mandated requirement with no funding from our government. Is that correct? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> so with this, we have no choice in allowing this, is what you're right. telling us? No. We're just trying to minimize whatever impact it may have on, 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 on work. That's all. Just don't tell your employees about it, Gert. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's the other one, it has to do with uniform and closing benefits. You have that before you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Makes sense. What's our policy now? Nothing. No, this this policy changes if well, Kirk could. So we're it's, asking, it's on, it's on uh, item seven there. So we're asking if somebody leaves, is this all within? Is this whole policy we're looking at? Is that all within thirty days of an initial hire? 
No, if they're leaving. They're leaving. Oh, if somebody's leaving after 20 years. They can't years, get a new pair of shoes and then quit tomorrow. Right, but they're also saying they have to turn back in their 11 pairs of pants. Oh, right, sure, if we really want 11 <laughs> pairs of shoes. The dry cleaning company wants uniforms. I think Spender that's what's in the vendor. They bought it within 30 days. The uniforms yeah. are actually the uniforms. Are clean yeah, I understand the uniform. Well, the uniform but company takes them back. Correct. Correct. Uh, do we and rent them from the yeah. uniform? Yes. Right. Okay, all right. Now I understand. I, just yeah. wasn't, I was kind of confused. I say I had to do that as a mechanic. So, well, I know I wouldn't want to take 11 pairs of pants that my, my employees wouldn't have used. So, okay, I understand the rent is from uniform shop. Okay. So, I need a motion to approve the personnel policy amendments that were presented. I'll put forth a motion to uh, approve the personnel amendments. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion or questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Any uh, committee report? I know Bruce Wayne has one. Committee report. I know I got it here. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'll do a brief actually. No, probably not. Um, if any of those who have not been to the park, the uh, new pavilion is 95% complete. Um, there's just some small uh, face, uh, facial uh, moldings and stuff to put up, but the building is in use now. Um, it's, it's a very large, very nice pavilion. Our, our town employees did a wonderful job doing it. Uh, the pavilion that we relocated has been in use for the summer camps, and, and it, it's also doing well. Um, landscaping will be done after the summer camp and, and the heavy traffic flow is done. Uh, the landscaping will be done you know, at a later date. We had a court meeting this morning. Um, as far as progress, uh, we are on time schedule. Uh, we made some minor changes um, to window construction and different things um, this morning. Um, and we are exploring various options as far as sprinklers and stuff like that. We haven't gotten any final reports as far as cost on those sprinkler systems. I know the sprinkler system uh, does not is is not required uh, within our town building. Um, so we are exploring that option as far as need versus anything else. Um, other than that, uh, the other projects are pretty much coming to uh, to an end. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'd just like to mention, um, unfortunately, we had the passing of Paul Washenko. Uh, last week, Paul had been a longtime employee of the highway department, and then um, he was caretaker of Camp Saratoga for whenever. So um, our condolences to uh, Paul's wife and, and his family. area there so some people who get out of the sun go to the pavilion that's right next to it and there's uh, i don't have little kids so yeah but there's a pavilion that's anymore. right there attached right. to it so right. there's lots of chairs and, and benches and, and uh, tables so yeah I, ha I have heard that there are there are yeah. umbrellas what we can fit within that area but there, if you have to get out of the sun there is a pavilion right out right outside um, it doesn't seem to be, I'm sure the people that are there are seeing that pavilion, and it doesn't seem Yeah, there's not a lot of shade. It's pretty big, it's hard, it's hard, because I got the same call, but I see a lot of shade there. Yeah. I think the issue is that having kids, I'd like to be right next to where the Absolutely. kids are. Absolutely. Well, yeah, That's the yeah, issue. Yeah. Water, yeah. That's the issue. Um, okay. Yeah, it's easy to... To move your to yeah. plan over to yeah, it's or it's a it's a juggling yeah. thing. But no, I, I mean, when I bring my kids to the park or the beach, I expect you know, we we fill them up with sunscreen and everything else. I, I, yeah. I know it's, it's a moot really point, but yeah, but if they are exposed for any length of time, you just move them into the right. under, yeah. underneath. Yeah. Underneath. Yeah. Underneath. Yeah. underneath. Yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah. I know. We, it's it's just that there's not a lot of extra space to put. 
a lot of what they've done. No. Those people and ask what would their solution yeah. be for yeah. them. Yeah. They'd yeah. like to see. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. More umbrellas, they said. I asked. I was there. I asked. <laughs> the, the umbrellas, because people get to the few umbrellas there are, and they stay there all day long. So the co complaints I did here were very similar to yours. I just really like put a, a time more. limit on the umbrellas. Yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> it could be a source of revenue. We could put like parking meters on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that was the same concerns I heard. Three minutes. I'm <laughs> sorry, what? I have one more, one more question. This is already um, 2020 census. Are the towns responsible in any way for the census that's going to be required in 2020? Or is that a state? Or no, we've been, we've been working on that for I don't know how long. Uh, about a year and a half. Um, complying with all the, mm -hmm. the federal requirements and and all those about mapping and all that kind of stuff <laughs> to so ensure that, that goes door to door and no that they're oh, hired no by the they do that so we just want to make sure that everybody here is counted I created the walking list for that I have a 12-week window to go through and uh, submit that to the uh, the government yes yeah, Sue and uh, her staff have been um, so it's our responsibility as a town to provide them with a walking list of households so that their crews can go actually. Yeah, we provide all the data, yeah. update the streets, update the addresses. And so do the we know when they're going to be doing that? I do not. No, I haven't heard. When you do hear that, can you, is there a way for the town or can the town even do it legally to notify um, the town, either, the various methods we have that census people are about and I, I don't think they go out until they get the questionnaires back and they get no responses and that is when they go out and hit the doors that they have not yeah. responded to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we we, when that happens we can put something up on our website. Then. Yeah. So if you don't send it in you're getting a knock at the door? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'd really yes. do it in person. <laughs> <laughs> Relay that so that people understand what that is coming from the and, and if they don't, they get that. <laughs> okay, uh, Maria, control this report. So we have budget transfers. The first one is to move costs related to labor for the Gavin Park Pavilion from the buildings department code to the Gavin Park Pavilion department code so that all expenses related to Gavin Park could be in the same place. The second item is for the Taste of Wilton. We're going to create a budget for the first time for this event because it will be, um, it, is, it is intended to be an annual event, so we think that there should be a department code set up for this to capture the expenses related to Taste of Wilton. The third item is to move the leftover monies from the Bicentennial event to the Park Fest where we anticipate needing some more money there. The fourth item is to move some money from our recycling program which is going to take on a different modality and therefore cost less and so that frees up some money for the uh, grant that is being requested of us from the Ulysses Grant um, Historical Foundation. They want some more money for specific capital improvements um, so we have um, created a, an increased budget for that. And the last item is related to the Labor for the Park Fest event. Um, we would like to, again, take some of that available monies from the recycling department and put it into Park Fest salaries. We're doing this all on one? Well, they're, yeah. they're all transfers. Yeah. yeah. Any, any questions on any of these? Because I know there's, there's some things here. Maria's got the answers. No. I don't see it. I'd like to make a motion to approve the budget transfers one through five. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions or concerns? Okay, hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. The second item relates to public housing. Every five years, HUD requires that there's a five-year plan put into place, and our administrator for the program, which is James Mastriani, Inc., 
um, has prepared that plan. Um, so the board has to uh, actually create a public hearing um, for this, and we're requesting to set up a public hearing for Thursday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, set up a public hearing for, was October 3rd? Yes. For our uh, the HUD five-year plan? Yes. Second on. Okay. okay, and I think Marie, you said uh, somebody from HUD here to answer any questions. Yes, it's, it's um, our administrator. It's something we've done in the past, but we have a new um, administrator of our, our Section 8 housing this year, so. Yes, so he'll be here to answer any questions, to give some feedback uh, about what the program does, um, so he'll be available for that day. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is the plan online? It is not online. It hasn't been accepted yet. But it, it could be put online. Well, I'm just asking if there's going to be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would assume people would want to, if they want to, review it in advance. We could absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll put it up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, uh, we have to get back to what, October, October 18th? October 18th is the due date back, yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Um, the next item is related to sales tax. Every year, the town is requested to um, select a method of cash. Getting yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, please take the cash. I second that motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. So we have a motion and a second to take cash. Um, Absolutely. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Next item is related to a fee waiver for the Wilton Volunteer Fire District. Um, there are certain permit fees that are related to construction, inspection, and plan review. Um, and the board is asked to ratify its decision to waive those fees for the Wilton Fire District. I make a motion to waive the fees for the Wilton Fire uh, Department, 61320. I'll accept that. Okay, motion a second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. And the last item is related to personnel um, item. Justice David Town is requesting to attend the annual New York State Magistrates Association meeting in Lake Placid. And it's from September 15th through September 18th um, involving overnight travel and that would require board approval. I would assume it's in their budget. Uh, yes. I'll make a motion we allow David Town to attend the annual Majestic Association meeting. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Someone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. That's it. Is there any other business? No business like show business. Okay. No other business. A motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. And second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You can stay. I said earlier I was going to